hard to believe that it's almost fall and we're already three songs deep into this project. It seems like we just started it. So song two was a success in me and Brooke's eyes. Um, it didn't get as many views as I was hoping for, but you know what? At this point in the project, I'm just kind of at the point of doing it for myself and doing it for fun. With this song, I went balls out with the weirdness and it is unlike the first two songs and it has a weird time signature to it. I don't know, it's like really odd and quirky. It's also the heaviest song out of the three so far. And uh, I think it was after the second song I told myself that I wanted every single song in the project to sound different. I wanted every single song to have a different time signature. And I told myself that song three would also be the heaviest one out of all of them. Yeah, dude, I gotta get the cymbals. I, they're so fucking expensive. Yeah, I know. I don't understand. They're more expensive than no, real cymbals. See, it, it does it again before it goes into the. So, should I do the. second time through. So yeah, song one was in 7-4 time, song two was in 4-4 four, four time, and now this song is in 5-4 time. And Brooke fucking hated me for it. Huh? You only played two different sections of... That was just an example. Okay. It's it's four times. If you think about... I'm one. talking about the beginning part. The... Yeah, I'm only doing that once right now, because that's what you said. Right. So the first time through you... Wait, what are we talking about changing? Are we talk talking about two different things? You said to do... The first time, and that's it. And then just single the rest of the time. But I would be doing the single thing three times before okay. the... Digga, 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 digga. So do... I was thinking maybe doing the the first time, and then the second and third time, and then the fourth time going back to the the yeah, but don't do it both times. The outline of the song is pretty simplistic. Um, it's also the shortest song of the three, but I don't think it overstays its welcome, and I think it's straightforward and to the point. I also incorporated the seventh string on my guitar in this song. Um, it's pretty much what the whole song is based around. I haven't really done that with the other two previous songs, so I wanted to push myself a little bit and force myself to use the seventh string on the guitar. <laughs> Something is different about the guitars. Um, it was a little bit of a challenge at first, trying to come up with a basic riff uh, using that seventh string, but um, once I got the basic rhythm and idea in my head, it just came to fruition and the whole song is basically structured around the opening riff that you hear. Um, but it slowly builds until you get to the verse. We also did a lot of panning with the guitars, which panning means like in one ear you'll hear the guitar doing one thing and then in the other ear you'll be hearing the guitar doing another thing. And I thought that was just kind of like a weird and quirky way to keep the listener guessing. I mean... If you really want to make it all shine up... That's kind of funky. Uh, what do I click?
Is it already recording? It's recording. Oh. All right, going dark. I fucked up. Uh, not only that, we're clipping for some reason. Can you uh, can you zoom that in to the like just a little bit? Cause I'm trying to follow the bass drum here. There was something that popped up on my social media feeds the other day. Um, it was me playing the guitar for the very first time, and it was like 10 years ago. And uh, the guitar I was playing with belonged to John Ruffier. He was in Lead Them to the Lake with me. And uh, it was just wild seeing me play a basic ass riff, but you know, just kind of seeing me taking those steps to learn the guitar and to see where I am now, it was just kind of an eye opener. So um, I had to find that video again and I had to upload it. The song is also very personal to me and I, I wanted it to be song number three because at the beginning of this project, I had the little intro video and it said that, you know, music is what feelings sound like. And while the first two songs, I do feel like they were representing my feelings at the time of my songwriting journey, I've always had this heaviness and this feeling of not belonging uh, in my own family sometimes. And there has been a lot of things that I've gone through personally through pretty much every aspect and branch of my family tree that I'm still angry with or still remorseful for, or I'm still upset with. So I guess that's why I wanted song three to be the heaviest because it's the song that represents how I feel on a day-to-day -day basis with my personal life, with my family. <laughs> probably going to laugh at the title of the song, but you can't spell families without lies. If you think about it, it is absolutely true because you can't spell the word families without lies. And you know, one day I might get over all the trauma and all the lies and all the stuff that has gone on throughout my family, but I've never really, really had an outlet to um, discuss my feelings besides therapy, but that's obviously private and everything like that. But I think the song represents how I feel immensely when I think about those things. It's just an angry, hard-hitting song, and it grabs you by the balls and doesn't let go until the final moments of it. Come on, dude. Come on, Jackson. Come on. Come on. Good boy. Whoa, partner. I can't say that. Can Shit's I? PG. Why are we talking like that? Really? Happy to dog and pump the cat the other time? Oh, yeah. I mean, that's animal playing shit. That's PG. Yeah. What the hell am I going to pay $100 for that little fucking piece of shit? Um. Keep playing it. Come on, keep playing it. Don't be a little bitch all your life. Come on. Yeah,